I'm gonna share with you my top five Cubase mixing tools that I like to work with every time I mix music. Hey, what's going on, my friend? The Chris Lim here from Mixdown Online. Exciting video for you today. Uh, on top of sharing with you my top five Cubase mixing tools, I also wanna let you know that the song that I'm gonna be working on in today's video is part of a mixing contest hosted by my good friend Warren Ewart and RateMyMix.com. And the song is called Far Away From Home by an amazing uh, guitar player and multi-instrumentalist called Gilad Hexelman from his album Far Star. Now, the cool thing is that Gilad works with Cubase. He was kind enough to send me a copy of his Cubase mixing session so I can use it in this video and also in a mix breakdown video that I made for Produce Like A Pro. That is gonna be out in a few days from now, so keep your eyes open for this one. So I'm gonna leave the link down below to get into the mixing competition, uh, which is a mix or a remix contest uh, where there's a bunch of amazing prizes to win. And the cool thing on top of that is that myself, Warren Ewart and Gilad Hexelman are gonna be part of the judging team for this mixing contest. So go ahead, click the link down below, download the free multitracks and get into this mixing competition. I'm looking forward to hearing your mix or remix of this song. Now, let's jump in Cubase. So now, the first Cubase tool that I like to work with is the use of a marker track, uh, like I have on top. Now, when I received this mix session, there was no marker tracks and I actually added one myself uh, just to um, to get uh, a layout of the song structure. And this is how I use it when mixing a song. So I can go from one part of the song to the other in a very fast and efficient way. Uh, so I have it right here on top. And this way, uh, by clicking on my uh, keyboard keypad, Okay, um, I have that set up to uh, control uh, which, uh, which uh, marker I want to go to right away. So if I click on one from my keypad, this is going to bring me to marker number one, which is the intro. Uh, so let's go and have a quick listen of what the sound and mix sounds like and by listening to the main theme, uh, which is kind of a verse uh, for that matter. So let's have a listen. So if I want to go straight into the guitar solo, I'm going to click on four, and there you go. And let's go straight uh, to the full theme part, which is this one. And now the full band comes in, which is quite nice. Let's go back to the beginning. And now I'm back at the intro. You know, so it's a very fast way to jump from one section to another and always have a visual of the song layout. Um, and what I like to do also with the marker track is to place it on the uh, upper level of the, um, uh, the project window. So to do so, if you don't know that little trick, uh, there's a divide track list that you can activate. If I deactivate it, you know, my marker track is gonna be at the same place as all the other tracks on the project window. But if I uh, activate the divide track list, that will create a second layer. So that will actually divide my project window in two parts, okay? So I can bring any tracks that I want on the upper level of, the, uh, uh, of my project window and this way, if I bring those tracks up and down, I'm always gonna keep a visual of my marker track that is set up at the top level of the project window. So again, you just need to activate the divide track list to make that happen. Now, the second Cubase feature that I like to work with when mixing is the control room. I'm a huge fan of the control room. I actually made a whole video on uh, the control room, which I'm gonna link down below. Now, one of the main reasons why I like to work with the control room is the insert section that I have access to where I can insert up to eight plugins. 
And those plugins are mainly reference type plugins, uh, like Supervision, which is a graphic analyzer. And I also have like plugins like uh, Sound ID, you know, when I mix on some headphones and my speakers. Also the Waves Studio Racks, uh, where I have a uh, different instance of the uh, NX Studio Collection plugins when mixing on headphones. So all of these active plugins inserted from the control room are not gonna affect the mix when you export your final mix. This is very practical because I don't need to bypass a sound ID, for example, uh, every time I bounce a full mix. And I also love to work with the control room to reference music. I actually made a full video on that technique uh, where I use a reference track controlled by the control room. So this way I can switch from my mix to my reference mix with one click. Okay, so again, if you wanna know more about that technique, go watch this video. Now, the next tool that I like to work with in Cubase is the L or the listen uh, feature we have on a channel. And this is also linked to the control room and I'm gonna explain to you why. So how I use the listen uh, button that I have right here is to monitor the signal coming out of a specific channel. Uh, for example, I have this reverb channel. So let's have a listen if I... So if I take this reverb, there you go. I'm monitoring the reverb itself without the dry signal. Oh, and same for this one. That is a compressor, an 1176 for parallel compression. And what about this one? Okay, that is a guitar type pedal called Ra by UAD. Now, some of the drums are going into this pedal and also the lead guitar for parallel processing. And that is the full, um, the full uh, uh, processed signal that, that I'm monitoring. Another reverb where the, uh, the snare is going into. So this is a very good way to monitor the effect of an effects channel. And I use this all the time. Now to set that up, I have to use the control room because this is actually part of it. Uh, so again, the control room is a Cubase Pro feature, okay, in case you're wondering. So by activating the listen button, uh, that will be controlled by this part of the control room uh, that is uh, set up to activate to use after fader listen. So I make sure AFL is active. And what I do is I enable uh, the listen for output and I make sure the level is at unity point. And then I bring the listening dim way down because I could balance uh, the dry signal if I wanted to with the listen dim level, but I bring that down. So when I click on the L, the listen button of a channel, I only monitor what is coming from this channel. Now, the next Cubase tool that I like to work with when mixing is to use uh, group channels or VCA channels for each type of instruments like drums, bass, guitars. In this case, this is what I have. I actually used VCA channels to do so. So all of the drum related instruments uh, are being controlled by this VCA channel. And same for all bass instruments, all guitars, and all other instruments in this case. You know, if I have a mix that is not an instrumental song uh, where I have vocals, I'm gonna have one VCA or one group channel for all vocals. Now, in this case, what this is gonna do is to allow me to monitor specific type of instruments. For example, I can mute everything except the drums. or listen to the guitars only. Or let's go with everything else, like pianos, whistles in this case. So very cool also if you want to bounce uh, different types of instruments all together, you know, separately to create stems. Uh, that can be a good way to do so. And a quick tip here, uh, as you noticed, those channels are staying put on the right side of my mix console, uh, which is quite cool. So to do so, uh, you open the, uh, the left zone, you make sure you're on the visibility tab, you go down to zones, 
and then you will see your channels and you see three dots. Okay, uh, the one by default is the center one, okay, which is the location of uh, all the channels, but you also can bring those channels to the left side of the mix console or the right side of that console by just bringing uh, the dot to the right or the left. Okay, so this is what I did for all those VCA channels and also my stereo out channel. They are located to the right side of the mix console, so this way they stay static and they're not going to move uh, when I browse throughout the mix, you know, the mixing console, which is very practical. Now, the last the Cubase feature that I like to work with when mixing is side chain. Uh, I have an example for you. If we listen to this piano, I have a compressor on top and you can see that the uh, activate side chaining is on. So that means that compressor is going to react on a source. Uh, that will be detected by the compressor, okay? Which in this case, if I go back and I look at uh, the parameters here, I see that the guitar group channel is actually triggering that compressor. So that is actually the source of the side chain. So if I go on this guitar channel, I see that I'm sending a signal to the side chain compressor of the piano channel. So every time the guitar is playing, it will compress the piano. Now, the reason why Gilad used sidechain compression in this case is to keep the piano out of the way every time the lead guitar plays, you know, because the lead guitar in this case, since this is an instrumental song, the lead guitar is the instrument playing the main melody, you know, so it needs to be up front. So using the sidechain tool in Cubase is actually a good option here. Don't forget to download the tracks and get into this mixing competition. All the details are down below. Uh, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. Leave also your comments and questions, and also your top Cubase mixing tools that you work with all the time. Take care, and I'm going to see you next time. Bye-bye.